myself Navin Juyal and Priti Prohit are back again with a new video on Andaman Island. Now this video is in two parts. The very first part of the video will tell us about how the Andaman Islands were evolved through time. So we will be talking about the geological evolution of the Andaman. Then it will be followed by when did the man appeared, from where they came to the Andaman. Following that, what are the historical evidence of human occupation? We will also be discussing about a Rose Island. Rose Island is now known as the Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose Island. That is the island east of the Port Blair from where the British has ruled the Andaman from 1858 onwards. Before I, before I proceed with my video, I must thank Professor Jyotiranjan Ray of Physical Research Laboratory. It was his kind support that I could make it to the Andaman, not only the Andaman, the only active volcano called Baron and the Narkundam. I also want to thank Professor Anil Sukla who taught me about the geochemistry of the volcanic rocks. And finally, and most importantly, I must really put on record the the support provided by the Indian Coast Guard and the police post at Narkundam. Without their support, it was impossible to visit an area like Narkundam and the Andaman. Okay, to, 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 to begin with, uh, as you can see, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands are located in the southern edge of the Bay of Bengal and it forms an arc between the Bay of Bengal in the west and the Myanmar and Sumatra in the far east. The arcuate morphology follows the oblique subducting Indian plate shown by the white line along with the triangle. The triangle marks the direction of the Indian oceanic plate subduction. The geophysical studies indicate that the plate is moving at a rate of around 4 cm per year shown by the dashed arrow at the bottom of the satellite image. The volcanic islands are located between Sumatra in the south and Myanmar in the north which is again marked by the red dotted line. The dormant volcano of Manarkondam Island and the active volcano of Baran Island is located on this volcanic arc. Now, geological antiquity, when we talk about of the Andaman Island, is relatively well known. The rocks which form the south-north trending linear ridges, as you can see in the satellite imagery, were deposited on the sea floor between around 65 million years to less than 3 million years or so. The oldest rocks are the ophiolite. In fact, ophiolites are the suits of the volcanic rocks which are which were formed on the ocean floor. In the Andaman, these rocks are dated to around 60 million years, and the rocks which and were deposited at depth of 2 km to 2 km to 3 km, now they have presently occur on the surface of the Andaman Island, implying that these rocks have been abducted during the compression of the oceanic oceanic plate subduction. Now, fascinating land from the ecosystem attracted scientists for ages, particularly the geologists, because it has been found that the northern and the central Andaman sediments were largely derived from the Himalaya after around 34 million years ago. This is very important because this was the time when the Himalaya attained its present day relief and the erosion began to set in. Thus, these sediments in Andaman provides an important insight into the post-Himalayan collision history. This was probably one of the reasons which prompted a geologist named Rink way back in 1847 to study the rocks of Andaman Island. It was this gentleman who postulated that the linear sedimentary ridges are the uplifted oceanic sediments which were squeezed and thrown up to a height of more than 700 meters. For example, the Ophiletic Saddle Hill in the north which is the highest elevation I think in the Andaman uh, Nicobar Island. In fact, the fascinating landform and the sediment led to the pioneer of the plate tectonics, Alfred Wagner, way back in 1915, to invoke the rifting of the western part of the Myanmar Peninsula, which resulted in the formation of the Andaman Sea. Andaman Sea, according to Kare in 2005, is not very old. I think it was formed around, uh, it began to form around 11 million years ago or so. That is very interesting. Based on the various papers, I tried to make a simplified cartoon uh, 
and this is exclusively based on my understanding which may not be absolutely correct but this is what i understood and this uh, through which i would l- like to communicate the land form which i understood uh, between the andaman and the eastern part of the uh, andaman sea now as you can see the oblique subduction of the indo australian plate below the eurasian plate or the southeast asian the oceanic plate is as it is moving down below because of the pressure and temperature rise in the temperature is partially melted and reinjected as a lava in the form of currently active bannon island this is very simple model which is for which is which has been demonstrated in many area where oceanic oceanic subduction takes place you get island arc volcanics and you get a four arc basin you get a back arc basin in the four arc basin you get the sediments which are squeezed and thrown up that is nothing but the andaman sediments whereas in the back arc the rifting takes place because of the convection current diversion now the ocean sediments are as i've said is they are squeezed like a in the andaman like a toothpaste and brought up above the sea level and probably after uh, 60 million years since andaman and nicobar are the islands surrounded by the sea one is really intrigued to know how and when men appeared on this isolated patch of the land mass these people who inhabited the andaman island which are largely two type of the people one is negroid negroto tribes we call them they are they live in the andaman and second is the mongoloid tribes which lives in the nicobar now the negroid tribes tribes are the great andamanis ongis jarwas and sentinels whereas the mongoloid tribes are the sompin and the nicobaris now the question comes that from where these people came and how they came to this this uh, island if you take a distance as i mentioned earlier the from the indian subcontinent if you had major a distance the from the from say for example from tamil nadu coast the distance is 1000 km plus similar is the case with the bengal area um, from the bengal delta it is again roughly around 1000 km the only area which is proximal to andaman and nicobar is the sumatra in the south and the myanmar in the north so it is likely that these were the, the, were the location from where people probably would have migrated to this island during the time when the sea was conducive enough for them to sail it out that means it should not be too deep a sea similar to the condition which which people talk about the aborigines when they migrated to the australia from the timur island in the northwest when the sea was lower around 60 60000 years ago they sailed used the wind strength and sailed into the australia similar probably would have been the case of course so far the dna studies are concerned uh, we know really re- relatively well that the the uh, uh, negroid tribes uh, have got a dna affiliation with the african people whereas the mongolians will have certainly different this thing but the question is we do not have an absolute age of the people of the aborigines when did they really occupied the andaman island people talk about 60000 years ago but i have i'm i'm still not able to find a very definite evidence for the same although there are evidence based on the uh, shell maidens which are the uh, molluscan shell eaten by the people who live along the coast that have been dated to 2.5 to 3000 years but that's too young an age but, but the if you talk about the uh, historical or modern man appearance on this landform that means that then then uh, people talk about that the danish people were the first to colonize this island around 1750 ad this was followed by the britishers again uh, and they brutally killed the andamanis tribe which occupied the greater andaman and this was called as the abardin war uh, uh, and the war was owned by the british by the britail of a convict his, his number was 276 mr dudnath tiwari who betrayed the trust of the andamanis who had faith on him this man uh, and because of him the british butchered virtually the andamanis now that's a different story altogether so british ruled it from a small island located far east of the sorry east of the port blair named rose island it was called as a rose island named after the marine surveyor sir daniel rose british used the 
Indian prisoners, mostly the freedom fighter, to construct their buildings, palaces, garden, garrisons, churches, clubhouses, etc., lived very lavishly over over uh, on this island. In fact, they never missed their their uh, country. They had all the amenities which they used to enjoy in their country in their country uh, at the expense of the Indians, whom they really used as a slave. Hence, this island was also called as the Paris of the East. The Paris of the East became a ghost island after 20th January 1941 when a major earthquake ruptured virtually the Rose Island into two parts. And that led to the British to abandon it and they moved back to the Port Blair which is just across. Now, the final blow to the British was given by the Japanese invasion into 23rd March 1942 and finally the Andaman was liberated in 1947 that we all know about it. Today, the so-called masons, the palaces, the churches and the buildings are under the cobweb of the roots belonging to the tree of Ficus family and these roots are trying to prevent the leftover ruins from being finally collapsed. So this was the first part of our video. Now we'll, in, the, in our next part, we'll be talking about our journey from Port Blair to Narkundam and to the Barren Island.